Cordonish is a leading provider of professional digital audio networking technologies to clients in both Australia and overseas. Its Dante platform distributes digital audio signals over computer networks and is designed to bring the benefits of IT networking to the professional AV industry. It replaces traditional analog audio cables by transmitting perfectly synchronized audio signals across large distances to multiple locations at once using nothing more than an ethernet cable. Joining me to discuss more is CEO and co-founder Aidan Williams. Aidan, welcome to TCN TV. Uh, thank you very much. Great to be here with you. Now, across the globe, network digital connectivity is replacing traditional point-to-point -point analog cabling in the AV industry. What is driving this shift? And since COVID, what are you seeing as the broader industry trends within audio over IP? I think um, broadly, the, the, the shift has been, been going on for a number of years, and it's really driven around cost savings to do with installation. Uh, so if you can if you can use an existing network that's in a building, then you save a lot of money and you don't have to add uh, extra cabling. So that's that's obviously one driver. And the other one is I think people want to deliver AV in a software form rather than buy a lot of equipment and manage that equipment in rooms. Um, you know, from the COVID point of view, I, I think. Uh, yeah, our, our technology is broadly applicable across a number of different markets. Uh, some markets are very uh, depressed at the moment, like live sound and anything to do with, um, you know, large congregations of people getting together. But on the other hand, um, you know, there's a lot of activity in, in the university sector as they're trying to get all their uh, teaching rooms online, for example. So that's driving a lot of AV activity as well as in conferencing like corporate conferencing. Okay, now Audinet puts its total addressable market in the digital audio networking space at around 400 million Australian dollars annually for chips, cards, modules, and software. What share of this market does Audinet currently have? And what market penetration is it targeting in the next year or so? The, the 400 million is, is specifically for the audio business, our existing audio business. Um, so at the moment, that's probably only seven to eight percent penetrated. That that type of uh, number. So there's plenty of headroom. So there's there's a transition that's taking place in the industry, and we're kind of at the leading edge of that wave, I would say. Um, we are by far the largest provider of of network to audio technology in the industry. So I think there are if you if you think about the size of the catalog that's available on the market, the number of products in the Dante catalog, which is what our technology is called. Uh, is about eight, eight times as large as the the other uh, next nearest competing technology. So lots of traction in the market, but still largely um, unpenetrated. So, I mean, historically, we we would be growing in that sort of 26 to 30% kind of growth range uh, in, in terms of revenue over the last few years. But um, unfortunately, that's not something, a prediction I would want to make for this year, given all the uncertainties with coronavirus, for example. So our approach this year has been more to just um, provide information as we go quarter by quarter and, and let people see what's happening in the market and what the dynamics are. Now, taking a wider perspective, Ordnance sees the total addressable market across digital audio networking, video networking and software services for Pro AV at more than $1 billion. In this broader addressable market, how is Ordnance penetration tracking relative to key rivals? It's really early days yet um, in, in those markets. So I, I think the way we think about it is we, we've got a good solid position in the audio market. So that's kind of our beachhead. So we're, we're effectively doing a land grab in that audio market. There's something like 2,800 products that have our technology in them. So we're pretty well established in that market. And so we want to grow that. Um, the video market is early for us. Um, so it was a major milestone for us in the last financial year was launching our first video product. Um, so that that's uh, seen good reception and, and quite satisfying traction. It's it's certainly going quicker than the audio products. Uh, when, we, when I started Ordinate a number of years ago, it was a tough slog as a small startup trying to sell technology like this. Uh, so I think on the video side of things with our new products, we're definitely getting the benefit of people's understanding of the Dante audio uh, technology. And, and there's a lot of excitement if, if in the industry, if we can just do what we did for 
the audio market and do that again in the video market, then I think we'll be successful. Now, your last AGM presentation mentioned uh, that the uptake of the company's new Dante products has been particularly encouraging. Mm. What is generating buyer interest in these products? Well, I, I think there's a, a strong desire to, to, um, to, to use software to deliver um, products and services much more. So a lot of AV equipment actually has a lot of software in it anyway. Um, so historically, our business has been uh, one where we, we effectively take software and then we package it inside a, a chip or a, a module and sell it to a manufacturer. Um, our newer products are much more software oriented. So they're, they're PC, Mac and Linux implementations of, of our Dante technology. And that means that it's it's very easy for a manufacturer to use them across a wide range of products. They don't necessarily need to redesign the electronics of their products in order to adopt it. So I think there's lots of interest in that. Um, and also there's there's bill of material costs. Um, you know, the, the, the costs of the electronics is cheaper if you can reuse it. So if we can deliver our technology in a software form rather than add more chips and more electronics to a product, then that makes, uh, that makes everybody's lives better and the manufacturers get a cheaper product in the end. Sure. Now, Ordinate is also offering its Dante AV product design suite to customers and has launched the Authorized Implementer Program, which opens the way for production of white-labeled Dante video products. Besides the pending release of the first Dante video products by uh, Ordinate customers, what else is in the product pipeline over the next financial year? Yeah, we've, we've not... Um... We've not been too specific about what, what products uh, we're developing. Although if you look at our audio product portfolio, you can see that we began with the module and we, we have some chip forms and we also have software forms. So I think it would be uh, a reasonable guess <laughs> to, uh, to basically uh, imagine that we would be building out our toolbox of video products, including chip oriented uh, products and also software based products going forward on the, um, on the, the customer side, it's, it's, uh, it's not the case that we would typically disclose what our manufacturing customers are doing unless they explicitly uh, uh, give us permission to do that. So um, we've, we've seen adoption with uh, Bolin, a camera company, uh, Patton Electronics, who are a maker of um, uh, effectively digital interfacing boxes that go from uh, video signals onto the network and vice versa. And also one of our long-standing customers, Yamaha, has adopted the technology. So there's a bunch of others as well that have adopted it, but we're not in a position at this point to uh, to talk about them. But I would expect over the next, uh, certainly in this financial year, we should see the first products coming onto the market. You've also indicated that some of the well-supported $40 million equity raising completed in mid-August could be directed towards strategic acquisitions. What's the motive behind these sorts of acquisitions? Um, is it actually to build business systems um, and development capability, or is the company looking um, maybe to accelerate a broadening yeah. of product offerings? We, we've had a long-term strategy really to, to move into the video market and ultimately develop software and, and things like platform services long-term to really um, you know, effectively convert AV systems into, into a kind of app that's delivered in software is the general sort of long-term picture. So any, any uh, complementary technologies or teams or products, for example, that line up with that strategy are certainly in play. Um, so we're, we're looking at things like um, uh, video technologies of various sorts, codecs, signal processing, uh, platform technologies, cloud-based technologies, those sorts of things. Um, having said that, is Ordinate has, has historically been a company that's developed its own technology. Um, and so, I see the recent $40 million raise is really uh, the board doubling down on our long-term strategy to, to grow our technology creation capabilities and, and to continue to invest in uh, doubling the size of our engineering and product manage team, management teams long-term. So there's a combination of looking at, at potential bolt-on acquisitions um, that are complementary to our long-term strategy continuing to grow our, our organic uh, capabilities for developing products, particularly in the video area. Um, and finally, as you say, the, that, that business system type stuff, as we scale, we absolutely need to be uh, improving our, our backend business systems in order to be able to, to 
you know, handle a higher volume of orders. Absolutely. Now, Ordnance's uh, September quarter sales revenue number was well up on the COVID-19 impacted figure for the prior quarter, while a small EBITDA gain was achieved in the face of these continued challenging conditions uh, in the live sound and large event segment. What drove the sales recovery in your fiscal first quarter? Yeah, I, I think um, the, the the really big picture is uh, I think um, things returned a little bit from that that sort of darkest hour, uh, kind of in that sort of April May type of time frame. So there was certainly just a general uh, recovery as people kind of worked out what the implications were and that the, that the world had not come to an end. Um, the uh, so what what has been driving certainly our our revenue um, as as I mentioned, live sound has certainly been depressed. But on the other hand, we've seen lots of interest in the university and and uh, unified communication sector, so corporate conferencing, um, and so that that's meant that we've we've seen a pretty healthy increase in the sale of these little adapters that we make, which which are USB to Dante networking, for example, and all of our software products. So we we sell uh, a few online retail software products uh, via a website, sort of you know e-commerce kind of transaction. And those things have been really healthy as well. So the combination of the adapters and the uh, the software products has kind of offset the uh, the the decline from say the the live sound market. I think that's a testament to broadly the fact that technology is applicable in a wide range of industries, and so we we get some measure of insulation or diversification from that. And now finally, uh, the ordinate share price is more than double its mid-March low point, but still under the um, more than $8 highs seen late last calendar year. How will you be driving growth in the coming year? I'm not a watcher of the ordinate stock price, typically. I'm not sure it's a great idea for a CEO to be doing that. Um, Certainly what I will be focusing on this year and what the company's uh, focusing on is, is really around what we call design wins. Um, and so this is, is really signing up new manufacturers, getting those manufacturers to design our technology into new AV products uh, and getting them to the point where they can actually put that product on the market. Because every one of those new products, when it hits the market, it generates repeat orders for us every time they manufacture one of those products, either for a chip or a module or a software license or something like that. So, so for us this year, I think it's it is an uncertain year. We don't ultimately know what's going to happen with uh, you know coronavirus and lockdowns and second waves and all of that. But one thing I do know is, from a strategic point of view, if we invest and we we certainly focus on getting those design wins on board, then that will prime the pump for recovery when it occurs. And it will, will certainly set us up for, uh, if not this year, then future years, uh, solid growth to come. Well, thank you so much uh, for your insights and all the best for the future growth strategy. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV and drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, please send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.